Hey everybody, thanks for checking out this Worship Sound Guy Mix U tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to EQ a kick drum. The kick drum is kind of the foundation of your mix, so it pays off to know how to EQ it well. In this scenario, we've got a fully live recorded drum kit with a kick, snare, two toms, and stereo overheads. So in this case, the uh, kick mic was a Shure Beta 52 placed just inside the sound hole. Let's check out what it sounds like with no EQ. Here it is solo. Okay, so it sounds pretty good. It sounds pretty natural. It's a well-tuned kick drum. It's a good sounding drum. So I do have a gate and a compressor on there. We'll go over those settings in another video, but they're a part of the sound, so I left them on there. But our EQ is completely flat. So for this, I'm using FabFilter Pro Q2. It's a great equalizer plugin. It's got an awesome analyzer on here that we'll use to check out what we're doing and be able to visualize what's happening as we EQ. So let's go ahead and look at that. So, with the kick drum, as you can see, there are kind of two distinct regions we want to worry about. The first one is a low area, and uh, that's where your sub content, your punchiness is going to come from. And then the other one is this upper high end area where we have the click and kind of the presence of the drum. So let's listen to each of those separately and see what they sound like. Okay, here's our low area. And here's our high frequency range. So our job as we EQ this is to take those two different areas that are clearly very different sounding and make them gel together as one cohesive sound and eliminate anything that's distracting from either area. Let's go ahead and play the drum in the context of the mix. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually to put a low cut filter. I'm gonna bring it up to about 20 Hertz. The reason I'm doing this is not so much for the sound of that cut, but it's just because on most systems, no matter how good they are, they're really not going to reproduce down that low. That's too low for even the best subs to get. So we're going to eliminate that. It's just taking up space in our mix and we really don't need it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on some of this mid-range area. You'll notice that it's kind of between the two peaks that we saw on our analyzer. So this is an area that can sometimes sound muddy or boxy or just unpleasant. Let's take a listen to it and see what it sounds like. I'll boost it so you can hear it. And let's solo that region. So you can hear it kind of has a knocking sound to it. It's not really very pleasant. It's, it's one of those things that doesn't contribute to the sound very much. And we're actually going to cut it. Let's hear what that did. Now let's bypass it. So even just that one cut really cleaned up our sound immensely. All right, the next thing we'll do, I'm going to check out the high end of this drum. Let's listen to what happens if we sweep our EQ around. As we start from the upper mid-range and sweep our way towards the high end, listen to what happens. You can hear some distinct differences between boosting lower in the high mids and at the very end of the high spectrum. So if we boost lower down here, to me, what that sort of sounds like is more of a rock kick, um, which is usually more of what I go for. So somewhere in uh, between 2K and 5K is generally where I'll end up for that. If you go higher than that, you get into a very clicky sounding kick. Uh, it sounds a little more metal, which depending on what you're mixing for, it maybe that's appropriate. Uh, in this case, I have decided that it's not. So let's listen to what that would sound like. If we boost up here, we get a very defined click, which it doesn't sound bad, it's just not quite what I'm looking for. So, I want to accentuate this area. Right around 3.7K. I think that adds a nice top presence to it, it really kind of brings out what I like in the drum. Now, let's check out the bottom area. Okay, you can see on the analyzer where kind of the, the big impact bump is right here. As we boost that, 
uh, it's starting to bring out some of the lower sub content that's gonna be really good in a live situation. Sometimes you'll find it lower than that. I start looking for it around 50 to 60 hertz, all the way up to about 150. So it's a broad range we can find that in. Let's listen to that soloed and hear what it sounds like. So you can hear that's exactly the area that's gonna come out your sub. So we definitely want to boost that if uh, your system can handle it, just to get a little more of that sub impact happening. Okay, let's listen to what we've done in total so far. Let's bypass our EQ. And activate. So even just those four EQ moves we've done right there have really opened up the kick. We've uh, cut some of the very, very sub lows that aren't gonna be reproduced anyway. We've cut out a whole lot of this mid range right around 430. And uh, that just cleared up kind of the boxiness that we heard in the sound. Then we boosted the top end just to provide some extra click and impact. And then in the low end, we wanna get that oomph and punch that's gonna hit you in the face. Let's check out what it sounds like in the whole mix. That sounded really cool. Let's try to bypass it and then re-engage it and see what the difference is. It's amazing how much better the kick sounds with that EQ on. It's punchier, it just feels like it sits in the mix better, and it feels more cohesive as a sound. Thanks for checking out this tutorial. You can always visit worshipsoundguide.com to learn more, and don't forget to subscribe below for more videos.